part of it, one of it. And in hydro fracturing, we have normal hydro fracturing, normal one. They call PAD, P-A-D. And we have the propent one, and we have the acid fracturing. There are three types of fracturing. And then we have the other number four, the shell gas frac, fracturing the shell for a gas field. So in this case, fracturing is four types. One with a pad, there's been no propens, P-A-D. The other one is with a propens. The third one with acid. The fourth one where you fracture shell gas reservoir. I'm going to explain these things. So in the, uh, in the uh, hydro fracturing, as we say, uh, we are going to very much thinking of the hydraulic fracturing to uh, I'm just correcting something. I don't know why my computer is not doing that. Fracturing types, fracture geometry. I'll talk about geometry in terms of length, width, height, shape of it as well. Fracturing fluid, what do they use? Water based or oil based fluid? Foam or compressed air or nitrogen? I'm going to mention this as well. And the additives for that fluid, what do they add? Gel. Disco additives, corrosion inhibitors. I will mention these as well. And then conclusion, and then I open the question and answer for you. So ask as much as you can. Try to learn from this session. It's a nice topic, especially people working in a reservoir uh, uh, production as well. They need to do that. The terms I'm going to use, sometimes I use the tight reservoir, which I mean small permeability, less than one millidarcy. Shell content, it has an effect on the fracture as well. If the sandstone is a shady sandstone, maybe the fracture would not be successful. We have something called naturally fractured, naturally fractured from Allah. You got a reservoir with so many fractured rocks. We call them Fisher, F-I-S-U-R-E, Fisher. Fisher that means cracks, small fractures from nature, especially in carbonate rocks. They are naturally fractured. Then we talk about conductivity of the fracture in terms of permeability, volume, chlorate through it. Even Darcy equation has a different Darcy equation and, 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 and fracture from the normal situation. We talk about the porosity, the ability of the fracture, and the in situ stresses, vertical, horizontal stress, and also the tec tectonic stress. These are important to know. If you want to learn more about Hydraulic fracturing, you need to know something about rock mechanics. If you remember in physics, you have done Hooke's law, you need Hooke's law here. You know, you need to know the elastic limit, the plastic and the rupture one. Some rocks are elastic, some rocks are very much brittle. Sandstone compared to limestone, sandstone is more elastic compared with limestone. So you have to understand the solid mechanics. And the tectonic movement as well, important to consider. So these I'm going to mention as well in my uh, coming slides. At the end, I will send the slides, I email them to Abdullah in Egypt, and he might share it with you later on. At the moment, I'm talking to you from Manchester. 
I'm talking to you from Manchester in UK, United Kingdom. We have today cold weather. It is 10 degrees centigrade today. That's why I put a jumper. Maybe you have hot weather. Here we have a little cold weather. Temperature now is 12 degrees outside. So that's something you need to be aware about as a chair need to look at. Reservoir management. Some people will put the activity of hydraulic fracturing as part of reservoir management, part of the activities. They put it very much into the production engineering circle because it is aiming to uh, increase the production. And that's something which is need to be looked into and considered. Shukran Jasmine. Jasmine, Google temperature in Basra, 43. So the, remember now, remember this circle in the, in the middle, we call it reservoir management. In our university here in Salford, we give a master's degree in reservoir management. We have MSc, it titled my MSc Matna Reservoir Management. So part of reservoir management is hydraulic fracturing projects in order to increase production and to remove the skin factor. So what are the reasons? Why do we do reservoir simulation? Or for example, we do fracturing, why? One of the answer to increase the production efficiency and the flow capacity. The flow will jump. If you have a well, before a fracturing, produce could be 100 bottles per day. After a successful fracturing, you may produce 1,000 bottles per day. Because you make a big channel inside the pay zone. And therefore, the oil will pass through the, the, the uh, fracture go inside the well bore. The length of the fracture sometimes could be several feet, yeah, and you can think about four to six feet inside the pay zone. In diameter mountain, which is not very big, about one inch, two inch maximum, but it is long inside the rocks to bring more oil. Permeability, permeability of successful uh, fracture is about one Darcy, thousand milli Darcy. So you can increase a tight reservoir from one milli Darcy to one thousand milli Darcy. Can you imagine that? It's a big increase. So if you have a good permeability, you have easy flow, flow assurance, flow assurance. That's important to keep in mind. So it's a very, very useful way, expensive, yes, but useful. So the simulation by fracturing could be overcome formation damage. Sometime, I'm sure you have, they taught you in the, in, in, the, in the production and also they taught you a reservoir, something called the skin factor, the skin factor, the edge factor. And that's mean formation damage. The formation around the well bore sometimes is getting blind they lose permeability, they lose permeability because the pore is being blocked by certain impurities. The fracture, they open this, they remove it for you. A fracture enhances production for reservoir with low permeabilities. It will connect natural fracture system as well. So have so many fractures inside the well, inside the rocks, it will be connected in one fracture as well to put them together in one system. Uh, effective drainage area, it will be increased. Usually, make a note of that if you want. Usually, if you have a healthy well bore, a healthy well bore, a good production well bore, the drainage area amount uh, maybe 60 acres, six zero acres. It'll give you reasonable flow rate. But if you do fracturing, it will jump from 60 to 100 acres, 120 acres. 
So the, uh, the, the, the well bore will drag more oil from a bigger area. And that's good. And instead of drilling two wells, maybe one well with fracture is enough because it's dragging more oil. And get more of the field. So the drainage area usually yeah, is an average between 40 to 60 acres. In a complex reservoir, such as you have sandbars or sand lenses or heterogeneity is not good. You have a very bad permeability uh, changes in value. L -l -l fracturing is useful for that. If you have a reservoir very tight, or heterogeneity is very or if you have a skin factor, if you have a skin factor, then it will be very much recommended to do fracture. It's a common way, and there's so many projects on fracturing being done every year. Millions of oil bottles being produced by fracturing. Billions, billions, milliard, 10 to the power nine. And a trillion of gas cubic feet be produced by fracturing. The stability of the well bore, maybe it will be better because it will uh, reduce the drawdown. What's the drawdown? Do you know what the meaning of a drawdown? What's the meaning of a drawdown? You know that? A drawdown is the pressure differences between the PE, the pressure external part, minus PWF. PE minus PWF, we call draw a drawdown. If the drawdown is getting smaller, I will get, I will get a better uh, a flow rate. Thank you, Mustafa. It's a PR or PE minus PWA. That's a drawdown. So these are in front of you. If somebody you are you are just, for example, applied for a job interview, or you are discussing with a friend of you, why we do hydrofracturing. This is the answer for them. We have five answers for it, and that's important to keep in mind. The a fracture will be very much deal with the matrix. Matrix means rocks. Uh, and sometimes also the acid fracture. Acid fracturing is an acid with high pressure as well. So it's eating the rocks, make a hole inside the rocks. Matrix means the grains, the grain of the rocks. The sandstone is made SiO2. SiO2, silica. The limestone is me CaCO3, calcium carbonate. The dolomite is me CaMgCO3. So these are an semi matrix, which is the fracture attacking them to fracture the rocks. And then in each rock, in each rock, you have two elements. You have poor volume and you have matrix volume, the grain volume. And the fracture try to fracture the rock, especially the solid part of it. So sometimes I add with my fracturing through some acids. And the best acid they use sometimes is the hydrochloric acid. And the other acid used is the HF, hydrofluoric acid, or combination of them. And sometimes I add surfactant. Surfactant to give me better, I can say, or less friction, better extension for the, for the fracture, reduce friction. Especially when you add with the fracturing fluid, you add some small particles, call them a proband. P-R-O-P-P-A-N-T. You add to the uh, fluid in order to keep the fracture open. And sometimes we add inhibitors, corrosion inhibitors as well. So we ask, I will mention to you the table of the chemical we add. The acid fracturing, hydrofracturing is very famous. 
and also we use proband fracturing, which is because to make the proband here. If, uh, what's the meaning of proband? Jawab, the answer. They are the grains added to the fracturing fluid. These grains could be made of uh, ceramic, glass beads, or sandstone, or sands, sands the grains. Or there's other types we're going to mention them in a in a minute for you. So that's the answer. The answer why this is the answer why we do fracturing. The major issue for me is the formation damage. Formation damage is the other name for skin factor. I need to remove it. I need to produce more oil. Sometimes macro skin factor is no skin factor, but I need to make channeling communication channel between the pay zone and the well board. Where do we do fracture? In Jawab, we do the fractures in the pay zone, in the oil zone, in the gas zone. And through what? And through the perforation. The fracture through the perforation at the bottom part of the well board by injecting and pumping high pressure fluid and the pressure of the fluid will be more than the strength of the rocks. fracture gradient of the rocks, and you try fractures with the fluid you are adding or you're pumping it. Sometimes the fracture gradient could be equal to 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. PSI per foot. And that means I need to fracture the rocks. The fracture gradients change from one rock to another. The sandstone, different from limestone. Sandstone is higher than the limestone. So sometimes also I need to do that in order to create a good channel, my bane, a well bore, and the surrounding uh, reservoir. So formation damage, I would took only one part of it to uh, break down or to remove that uh, barrier and to make a channel through it between the well bore and the uh, formation. How? By fracturing. How long the fracture will go? About four to five feet inside the peso. That's enough, that's more than enough for a well bore. How much the fluoride will jump? The fluoride could be doubled, could be tripled. So very good for production. So can I get my money back? If I do fracturing, yes, you can get your money back easily because you increase the production. Who will do fracture for me? Me as a, an, uh, the owner of the, no, you are usually a service company. There's companies specialized in fracturing. You phone them, you book them, you give them a time and they will come with their equipment, with their materials and start pumping and fracturing the rocks for you. They have their own tools. I will mention that in the coming slides. But now I give you general introduction. So skin, I need to remove it. The best way, one, one of the ways to remove it is a fracturing. And the other way is acid and acid fracturing. These are a good ways to remove skin factor to change from positive to a negative value. And what's the impact? The impact, I will increase the production of the well bore and give you better J factor. Product index will be better, much better for a fractured reservoir compared with many fractured reservoirs. So these things you need to keep in mind. So what's the meaning? What do you mean by skin factor? What do you mean by formation damage? What do you mean by skin factor? Formation damage or skin factor, there's the area near, near to the well bore, but it has a small permeability, smaller than the surrounding pebbles. As you see in this picture here in front of you, you call altered zone, damage zone. The zone being damaged here. The blue one is damage. What do you mean by damage? I mean, the permeability used to be, for example, 90 millidarsi. Now it's only 10 millidarsi. 
I lost from 90 to 10. Why? Because some solid particle, because some filtrate, because of bacteria, because of scale, because of salt, something happened and they block it for me. So how can I remove it? And the answer, one of the methods is hydraulic fracturing or acid fracturing. The other method, but this is our talk today is hydraulic fracturing and acid fracturing. So I'm sure you have, they taught you if you are a petroleum engineer, I'm sure somehow you are aware about what we call the skin factor and the formation damage. People nowadays, they talk very much about something called the flow assurance. Flow assurance is something is usually useful and uh, make the uh, production uh, continue. Number two, so I can make good money. Especially nowadays, uh, yeah, and when the oil price is good in the market, so it is good to do fracturing because, oh, this is, no, not good. You can't make your money, but you can't get your, mo your money back. You can recover your expenses easily in short time. If you are a petroleum engineer, don't forget petroleum economics. Try to learn it as much as you can, because part of petroleum industry is the economics, the money. Number two, don't forget to learn project management. We teach in our university project management and we teach them also petroleum economics because fracturing is a, a project. Acidizing is a project. So can I manage it as an engineer, as a petroleum engineer? Do I know the meaning of uh, uh, a project? If the answer is I know, then please, I encourage you very much to read and understand more about uh, project management. Starting time, finishing time, uh, the risk of, of the project, the economy, and so on. So I encourage you very much, and somehow, if you want to be successful as a petroleum engineer, to have a background about economy, as well as about project management. I encourage you very much. And remember, hydraulic fracturing is a project. A project, why? Because it has money factor, time factor, team factor, and the quality of work. Usually I teach uh, people in project management, I say we have four T's, four T, T, capital T. T for team, the other T is for time, the other T for the task, and the last T is for total quality. So in any project, it should have. And remember, fracturing is a project. Your aim is to remove this blue area, to make the S factor equal to zero or to a negative value. So you are successful. You can see that after fracturing, the oil will come to the well bore as a mud, huge quantity. Sometimes you cannot control it. And you can calculate the skin factor using this equation, which is a modification of Darcy equation. This is Darcy equation. After fracturing, you put the ST. You see, it's ST, ST, ST. It's done here for total skin. After fracturing, this S will become negative value, minus seven, minus six. If you put a negative value here, what happened to the, what happened to the lower part of the equation will be small value, a small value that means more Q naught. So mathematically, mathematically, the S will be negative value, that negative value will make you not a bit larger. So fracturing is useful to make for me uh, more production. 
and that's very useful to be aware about and to give you a better flow at the end of the day. So the skin factor I'm aiming to remove by fracturing which one is the one under the this one the skin caused by stimulation this one stimulation stimulation and remember if somebody asks you is stimulation always positive or negative the answer is always negative a minus value the maximum negative is 7.8 minus 7.6 or 0.8 that is the benefit of hydraulic fracture it's reason for engineering mixed with the production so it is reason for a production engineering we have also here, if you see the word here, uh, last one, last one here, natural frax, natural fracture. This has nothing to do with it. Hydraulic fracturing is the job of the engineer. You as engineer, you fracture the rocks by pumping high a pressure, viscous a fluid inside the pay zone and the pressure of the fluid is higher than the strength of that peso to fracture it, to open it. And natural fracture is natural from nature. I sometimes I say from Allah, we have the rocks, it's a fractured rocks. Especially in case of limestone reservoir. So remember, a skin factor, we have different names for it. So this S total in this equation, ST, I mentioned here, at the bottom of this S total, total S, is actually all these are total S. One of them is the fracture, the stimulation, this one. And it should be negative value. Make sense? Useful? This is the way you connect fracture with the reservoir, with the production. Because the aim of it is to reduce the skin factor and change it into a negative value. Negative value make that equation more generous, more production. Simple, easy. This is the way you need to think as engineer if you want to understand the aim of it. So for sure, hydraulic fracturing is a very well-known technology and most of oil fields in the last 60 or 70 years by now. And they produce more than 600 trillion cubic feet of gas and more than 7 billion barrels of oil. So it is a good contributor for production. It costs money, yes, it costs money. It costs money, it costs environmental issues, it costs many things, but at the end of the day, it can make good money. If I show you the, I hope I can't see the slide. Some slides are very funny with me, that doesn't move very fast. Okay, if I show you the slide, here it is. These are the pumps we use in a fracturing. I said the fracturing or in fracturing general. Can you imagine? the pressure, the amount of the fluid you inject and so on. I'm going to show you some slide later on on that. Don't worry, I will come to it. So that's the fact. The other fact is the conductivity. Conductivity is the ability of the rocks to allow fluid to flow. And Andy, before fracturing, I have very tight rocks, very tight. Blind, a probability one head belly very small. After fracturing, I make it very conductive because the fracture has 1000 millidarcy probability change, and that would be important to keep in mind. So, the purpose of fracturing in, in order to make 
comes in conductivity. Can I calculate the conductivity of the fracture after finishing it? If there's a mathematical equation to calculate this title conductivity as engineer to make sure that how much the reservoir being increased in conducting oil, the job now. There's an equation here. You see this one in red color, FCD, fracture conductivity. I need to know the fracture probability, 1,000 millidarcy. WF is half inch divided by KE. What do you mean by KE? The original probability, the probability before fracturing. That's KE. You see this picture, Shabab? You see this slide? Inside, I have KF. I have WF, width of it, width magnet, half inch, maybe one inch maximum. And the XF length, the length multi Hawali, 48 to 50 inch. Uh, you have the damage area, the yellow area, and you have the KE. So KE, if you have a piece of paper and pencil, make a note of this equation, nice equation. Very simple to calculate. What to calculate? The conductivity of the fracture. What are the units for FCD? What are the units? Does it have unit or no? No. Thank you. It's dimensionless. Dimensionless. So the factor you see FCD from 10 to 30. What's the meaning of it? The meaning of it, the production increase by 10 times. So before fracturing, I produce, for example, 100 bottle per day after production, after fracturing, it could be jumped to 1,000 bottle per day. So if you have a factor 10, 11, 12, up to 30, that's mean you are doing very good and you can get your money back soon. So it is true, it's a fact that fracturing will increase production, especially in tight reservoir. What do you mean by tight reservoir? Reservoir with a probability less than, less than one millidarcy. has a mean tight reservoir, which needs a fraction sometimes. Or, of course, you have other reasons, such as formation damage or something like that. I hope this information is uh, useful for you. And as I said, as Abdullah mentioned to you, if you have any comments, also write it on the chat, and we're going to discuss it after finishing our uh, talk, inshallah. So that's the fracture going to aim. And it's a me vertical fracture because vertical with the axis of the well board. The blue area, the blue circle, the well board. And these two wings around it in the fracture. So you open the rocks like this, yeah, you rocks like that, and you open them this way. And that could be uh, uh, make a channel. So if you open that way, if you stop the pump, it may come back again, close. So what shall I do to stop them close totally? Like a jaw. Shun and the wahad fakkin, fakmal asnan, elusively. Kevin Nadin fakkin and Chisamaba. What shall we do? We inject solid particle inside them. We call them what? Probant. So and the Mayaglov, it does not close 100%. And this probant will give me the Nice variability later on. Make sense? That problem you choose, it should be of certain quality. It should not be weak, weak enough so it could be crushed. And should be not very solid enough could be penetrated. So we have to make a good study about the stress analysis on the problems. Hubeibad, Karawiya, Sagira, Masnu'a min ceramic small circle particles, spherical particles made of carbon or sometimes made of ceramic or sometimes made of certain uh, piece, glass piece. 
او بي بعد زجاجي So the conductivity, and it's beside the equation here, he told me as Dr. Hussein, give me this equation, thank you. Can I also find conductivity from a chart? This chart also tell you on the X axis to find the fractal conductivity. If you know the other data such as the SF, the skin factor of the fracture with natural logs of XF over RW. What's XF? XF is the length of the fracture. So if I say 36 inch. And what's RW? RW is the radius of the well bore, 3.5 inch. Natural log plus the SF, the skin factor of the fracture, which I can calculate it using the principle of Darcy equation, which I mentioned here. Here. I can calculate the skin factor. As I said to you, I don't want to go with you on academia and just calculation. I talk to you very much in the sphere of thinking. My lecture is not academic lecture, it's very much academic with real life problems. Because I don't teach you in a classroom. But I give you a good information, a useful way of thinking. Think as engineer on this issue of fracturing. So you can calculate conductivity and also you can find out using the charge. I will email these slides to Abdullah and Abdullah, I'm sure he shared with you. So you can use it for your future application if you are engineer, already graduated or an NSC student or maybe you are still studying. So make note of it, useful for you. quite useful to have this topic to be understood. For surely in this case, the value of low rate according to the equation after fracture will be increased, increase. Why increase? Because the SF is a negative value. And that will be useful in this case. The J factor also will be very good, will be increased as well after fracturing. The porosity also will increase because we have a new porosity in the fracture, with the porosity of the matrix. So porosity will increase, a skin factor will be small value negative, permeability of the, permeability of the fracture also will increase, big number. The, the, the big increment will be in permeability. The larger an increase will be in permeability. Make sense? And because of that, I will get better chlorate. You can do some calculations. You can play with Darcy equation if you are adding the issue of the SF. And that could be very useful to be understood. What's the benefit of knowing porosity? The benefit will give you an idea about the fracture volume or fracture capacity. I will show you an equation later on how to calculate the volume of the fracture. We have some equation for that. And of course, knowing probability will be useful for Darcy equation. And I want you to differentiate between a fracture you do and used hydraulic fracturing and the natural fracture. Natural fractures, they are actually exist in the nature and the ropes. Sometimes it could be useful to connect them in one fracture. And that could be the benefit of hydraulic fracturing is to connect natural fractures into one channel because sometimes the natural fractures are not connected. So how can I connect them together? I do one horizontal fracture to connect them together. It's a to cross flow to connect them together. It is recommended 
<coughs> not to know the reserve of the fracture or the volume by knowing the value of the NU, I can say porosity. Thickness or the height of the fracture, length of the fracture, width of the fracture. So width, width multiplied by length, multiplied by height, it will give you what we call it, the volume of it. I will mention that in the coming slides. But all I want to say to you, I'm trying to tackle some reservoir properties within the fracture, such as viability, porosity, conductivity, volume of the uh, fracture. I will mention these, but I will show the calculation later on. Of course, as petrophysics data, petrophysics means logging data. You need to know porosity, viability, and compressibility. <clears throat> Some of the rocks are compressible. Compressible means they could be <clears throat> the overburden pressure more than the pore pressure. If the overburden pressure more than the pore pressure, the rocks could be compressed. You see, and my summer subsidies, like a like a, a small lake, it will happen to me. I think I have a picture for that. You know, sometimes these slides. Why? What is it? I have a picture for the compressibility. A real one, a real picture. If I can find it, here it is. You see this one. You see this oil field in North Sea, Bahr Shimal, near Norway. This field named Ecofisk, Ecofisk oil field offshore. They the largest oil field in the North Sea anyway, is to use to produce about 1 million barrel per day. <clears throat> Nowadays, it produces only 400,000 because getting old. You see here in 1973 and 1984, almost about 11 years later, I want you to count number of holes here from the sea level up. One, two, three, four. Same platform, Count number of holes, how many? Two. So what happened? They are four now, two only, what happened? Compressibility. I thank you very much. Because of the rocks being compressed, so we have some subsidies. Yeah, and you can is sinking. Uh, lose the borders between... Uh, the uh, because the pore volume or the, the, the pore pressure is getting smaller and smaller because we are producing the oil and gas. So we have no more pressure to lift up. We have only the weight of the rocks and the semiha is overburden. So it overburden is much higher than uh, poor pressures. We have subsidies. This is also important factor to consider when you do hydraulic fracturing. You have to understand your rocks as well before you decide, because sometimes may you do it and then you, you, you will lose because your rocks are very much uh, soft and they are could be easily compressed. So What's before the, the kind of... sorry, 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 sorry for that. After you finish, I will ask you. Inshallah, inshallah. So that's something we need to keep in mind and take a note, and then we can discuss that later on. Thank you very much. So we come back again, uh, as we said earlier. Uh, petrophysics properties, you need to know them for the fracture. Pebbility, porosity, compressibility, <coughs> saturation <coughs> of the oil within the fracture. This could be done by well logging anywhere. Resistivity log would tell you something about oil saturation. Of course, we need to expect. So, I a question for you. What, up, before fracturing and after fracturing, what could happen to the oil saturation? The answer should increase because we are creating easy channels so more oil will come through. And the recovery factor, the R, it should be also rising up. 
production increase, recovery factor increase, saturation increase, a, a drawdown decrease, a pressure drawdown decrease, variability increase, velocity increase, compressibility, I need to be careful about it. I'm sure if some of you heard about what's called shell fractures nowadays, people think about getting shell gas, they call it. The shell gas also, they, they do it by uh, fracturing the, uh, the shell with a huge amount of water, usually water, uh, mixed with sand particles, high pressure injected into the shell zone to break it and the gas will come out after that. Shell usually, some people consider it as a source rock, source rocks. So shell frack, if you ask Google, Nowadays, or if you go back again about, especially in America, they have so many shale gas. They produce a billions of cubic feet per day by fracturing the shale rocks using water with sand particles. There's an issue about environment, and sometimes they use a huge amount of water, and then when the gas come, it takes the water with it as well. Because same, same well bore, you fracture it, and also it's a producing well bore. Same thing with the hydro fracturing. You fracture, what do you fracture? What do you fracture? I fracture a producing well. I fracture a producing well. So these are, when you fracture them, you're creating channels and channels and they make the gas coming easier in this case because of the conductivity and because of uh, uh, no resistance anymore. I have a problem with my slides, so I need to move them this way. So this example as well about the fracturing, example about as well, fracturing in horizontal well bore. In horizontal well bore, you do have semi vertical fracture because vertical to the well bore axis will fracture the hard cover. Usually do it on intervals. Why? And you don't do it all one go because if you do it all in one go, you may collapse your the casing and cementing and other parts. So you put in intervals to cover more area in this case. Sometimes also you can do acid fracturing, but usually in acid fracturing, maybe you have corrosion issue. These are very much for shell frac, horizontal wear. Well. Horizontal wear well recommended in shell, shell gas with intervals to give more area, to give more production. Shell gas, they are not very, very deep compared to some of oil reservoir. But the problem with the shell, it has almost zero permeability. And it comes as a flex. So you break them and you need to study, especially when they come out, they come with so many debris, so many rubbish, I can't say. These are some of the equipment you need when you do uh, hydro fracturing. You need to have the, the, the uh, pumps, actually. <clears throat> what kind of pumps they use? They said PD pumps. PD means positive displacement pumps. PD pumps. Piston cylinder. That gives you high pressure and low flow rate. You don't need huge flow rate. You, need, you, don't need, you don't need too much flow rate. You need, but you need high pressure. The pressure of pumping should be more than the strength of the rocks. So you have to study the rocks before you know how much pressure you put in. You have blender. What's the, what, what, what's the benefit of blenders? The benefit of blender is to mix the water base with other additives such as surfactant, or acid sometime, or you add some corrosion inhibitors. So you have to blend it in a certain percentage. Fluid tanks should be supplied and a proban tanks. The probans, I would say the grain particles, the grain, the solid grain particles, could be silica, could be ceramic, could be carbox, they call carbox, which is carbon with coated certain materials, could be glass beads. And these are important to choose them. 
you have to do a good sizing and you have to study their strength, uh, crashing strength and so on. You do a good sieving analysis for the uh, sieve analysis for the for the uh, problems. So this is a little sketch show to you. You need fracturing fluid. What's the fracture fluid? It is water based most of the time. Most of the time, water based mixed with hydraulic additives such as guar or uh, surfactants or polymers or sometimes gel. At Kalabal Arabi, Simon break Sayara, break a Dehne break, Masayat, Dehne break Sayara, the break oil of the car, hydraulic. It's hydraulic liquid. The problems, Khazan, and filled with sand, clean sand or clean ceramic. Bukhabira, small, small piece, small lot. And the blender to mix the chemical and the pumps. Pump it down, and that could be happening to open the fracture. If you don't pump a probant, zero probant, the Hassami had fracturing, P, P for Peter, had PAD a fracture. يعني فراكتر بدون حبيضات بس فتح صغير يفتح كراش If you add a probant صح سمي انت probant fracture This is some of the equipment they use as example picture for it So huge amount and numbers of pumps and engines and therefore you need to think about it in that case And as the fracturing different from a propent fracturing. But as the fracturing, you don't need, if I show you a picture on that, you don't need to use the propent. If I show you a picture of acid fracturing, here it is. You see, this is the acid fracture, I picture. Because you are going to, or the acid going to eat the rocks, so it will open a hole, no need for any filling with the problems. Because even if you stop the pump, the rocks will not close. How the product? My brain acid fracture will propen fracture. A propen fracture, that means if I stop the engine, and maybe the two jaws, two faces of the fracture close, so I need to keep them open. So I fill them with a propen material. Show me a picture of problems. The problems could be look like, yeah, like this. You see, this is a problem, ceramic problems. Oh, ash paper, plastic beads, glass beads, glass beads. As you judge yet, a khafif was a martyr. Ceramic thakil. So in ceramic, you have to think about high viscosity fracturing fluid. But if you are using the ultra lightweight problems, then you can use water, only water, with no any additives for viscosity. But the problem with these problems could be easy to be crushed. Say any debris, say any small particles. So the probability of the fracture for ceramic problems will be higher than the probability of fractures caused by the ultra light weight problems because they could be cracked or closed. So back again, I'm just giving you some information here, useful information. This is the difference. Yeah, yani either under job interview or discussion, they get like I'm using a problems in acid fracturing, no need, no need to use. Sometimes they use, but generally no need at all. For this one. Sometimes these are 
the this one. يسمونها resin coated robots. Resin, R E S I N, coated C O A T E D robots. حبيبات سيراميك مغلفة بطبقة صمغية. Particles of ceramic covered with resin or coated with resin. Can you find it here? I'm asking you. The temperature at the bottom of the well bore, high or small or not very high? The temperature at the well bore is high. High temperature, heatable resin. Resin will be melted. Ido because of high temperature. And in this case, the particle will be uh, sticking to each other. So I creating a solid parts inside the fracture. So if the oil come through, cannot wash them out, cannot wash them out. At the end of the day, if these, if I go back again to this picture here, yeah, and this one, if the particles of the province are not very well sitting together, the oil when it come this way, it may wash it out. In oil, you get high pressure, high flow rate, you get it. In haramat, whatever you pump the province, you lose them again. You see the 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 province will get away and be separated. You see back again. In the ramad, in the oil, in the oil. So one of the way to stop that, I'm using the resin coated. Ceramic problems in order to keep them one piece solid together cannot be washed out by the oil. Of course, a resin coated a permeability amount is smaller than, but not very small, but smaller than the non coated one. But it's better for more staying at the bottom of the well bore. Even on a handy, no in fracturing one is a me pad PAD. Because I have a close the probant, high probant tank, I close it. I'm only injecting fluid, only a clear fluid. Water mixed with surfactant, water mixed with polymer, water mixed with agent materials, water mixed with some high viscosity additives. As a me pad stage. But how the Cheaper, yes, cheaper, but will not give me a good penalty at the end of the day. So, but if I add to that material and I open the ceramic or the probant tank and mix together with the liquid with the fluid, this is a fracture fluid, mix together, pump it through the well bore, rahas and me slurry stage. So either I first First, I will fracture my well bore with no any adding a province. I state number one, semi pad state. We say ending kisar khalas and no after the province because it will be easy for me <coughs> to open the fracture and fill it with uh, slurry. So I have two stages: pad and slurry. And these are some of the surface equipment you need. You need fracture pumps, you need sand storage, which is sand oil province. So please don't be confused. La tlachbat. When you go sand, he means ceramic, or he means actually silica a province. The wellhead, frac blender, blenders, mixing the fracturing fluid with additives. What are the additives? Uh, surfactant, uh, corrosion inhibitors, Viscosity additives and so on. Uh, tank fluid, most of the fluid are water based. Sometimes they use oil based. Sometimes they use diesel. They use diesel sometimes. But the diesel is not about an environmental issue. Chemical storage tanks. Which is you ask? I will mention the name of there's so many names of chemicals, more than 100 names actually. Gel slurry transport gel gel is to make the viscosity is high, so it's good to make less friction and better suspension of the province. What data monitoring and the jihaz? data flow rate, pressure, temperature, 
concentration and so on. So it's a big job. How long it takes sometimes? Fracture job, it's more common. Let me say, yeah, to finish the job. Some companies are famous on that. So remember now, Shabab, remember, for the hydro fracturing, we have a stage called PAD, and the other stage, we can name it a slurry stage. We add even a probant, we add acid fracturing, my fragile probants in this case. We have the and and matches, we use them, the fluid, the chemical additives, the probants, we have mentioned them. So the base fluid, sometimes it could be water based. And these are with certain viscosity smaller. We have, we are sometimes gel, gel to give you more viscosity and better uh, suspension of probands inside the fluid itself. With fracture fluid, a bar on base fluid, a plus the probands. Base fluid additives, so it's water, a plus maybe <coughs> uh, gel strength, maybe, sorry, surfactant, polymer, uh, gel, and so on. These are names, I will go very fast through them. And of course, you need to control the pH value, temperature amount, uh, viscosity, you measure it. So what do I need to measure for my fraction fluid, viscosity, gel safety strength, uh, water quantity, the additives, the pH value, temperature. Uh, I need to also check on the money wise, how much it costs me uh, and so on. Sometimes they use nitrogen, just compressed nitrogen, depending on. These are some name of, of the chemical they use in fracturing or different type of fluid. So the water base is the most common one. And yeah, other you are water base. Hand and form, my acid, and sometimes oil base. I don't prefer oil base very much because it has expensive and it has environmental issues. Acid base, if you want to do acid fracturing with no problems in this case. Alcohol, methanol is used quite a lot as well with water mix. Because sometimes alcohol is a solvent. And so on, these other names for them. So you need, what do I need fracturing? The answer is like this. I need fluid, I need the additive smelter, and I need a small rock cell the problems. I need tanks. And I need pumps, I need a quarter. All these are important for a fracture preparations. And chemical additives, different additives. For each one has a certain purpose. Mother or leaf, what shall I add to my fracturing fluid? I add gelling agents. Gelling I need to be more viscosity and more suspension. I need problems to become allega bil sail matin Reduce friction, my being rocks were a province. Across linker control, the fluid doesn't go everywhere. pH value should be around seven to eight. Uh, these are also scale inhibitors, corrosion inhibitors, bactericide. All these could be needed in this case to add surfactant, oxygen. These are different names. Do I need to add all of them? The answer, no. Some of them is very important to add, such as the gelling agent, friction reducer is important for me, maybe scale inhibitor is important for me, emulsifier is important, but I don't need to add all of them. And these are some of the, the additives, he make them here as a list, and he make the benefit of each one. I'm not going to go them one by one, but I give you this slide as information for you. There's a nice book called Hydraulic Fracturing Handbook. I will also maybe give the title of the book later on for you, if you want to read more about it. This is always, if you want to buy a book, buy it as HB, Handbook. Handbook is more practical than a textbook. Textbook is more theory. Handbook is more practical. You cannot do that. Advise it from me. I am professor and I know what I'm talking about. Uh, chemical use in hydro fracturing. I just worry about the time. I have came in to stop and then after that I open the discussion for you. 
Actually, I have exceeded my 75 minutes, but I will do my best. Um, a province, we have different types coming from Jordan in Arabic world. But Arab Arabi, they have good sand, sand. And these are car carbo ceramic, any, uh, carbo ceramic is also a nice one, come from certain mountains. So you have to study some time ceramic mountain. But then has ceramic, mine gets a 15,000 PSI, 15, PSI, and you don't break it. So it's useful. Sand, it gets a أقل من 6000 PSI. Sometimes even when I choose the problems, I ask myself, what is the crushing strength? How can they maintain the pressure inside the well bore without getting crushed? Then if a ceramic caster or some powder, then no use, you are losing your fracture. So be careful with that. And this graph, it talk about closure strength with payability. As you know, the more the strength, the more the closure strength, the less the payability because you're closing it. So the probant will high strength and you have to take payability to a compared with the sand. Yeah, you want to start all the normal sand, normal sand here. Oh, it's not the ceramic, but it's very well coated at 6,000 PSI, I think. I show by the no sand, payability amount is less than 70, but in this high strength, it can give me more than 500 uh, uh, milliliters, or even does the US. So it's very important to choose the right ceramic not to be crushed and you lose payability. I mentioned that I'm going to move a bit faster now because I'm aware of the time. At the end of the day, if I want, now we talk here, we talk here as a research or I uh, something I want to do as a company, I am calling a company to do fracturing for the well bore based in Romele oil field, for example, or uh, Sharara oil field in Libya. So what do I need to know? You need to know the stresses down at the bottom of the well bore. What kind of stress, vertical one, vertical coming from where? From the rock weight. What's the soho? It's an overburden pressure. And the Nuhthani huwa the pore pressures. Inside the pore volume, the air, and soil, gas, with water, with, with oil. How much my reservoir? In other words, reservoir pressure. al Musah al Arthur said, Alaykum, for the pressure, what reservoir pressure? And the horizontal stresses, and this coming from the tectonic movement and the uh, movement of, of the rocks itself. So you need to know them. You need to know the value of them. Can I calculate them? Yes. This equation in front of you to calculate the vertical stress. You see, we have vertical stress due to the weight of the rocks overburden. Can I calculate it? Yes, this is the question for you. إذا عندك ورقة وقلم اكتب معاد has vertical stress rho g d rho هي density of the rocks density of the rocks يعني تتراوح ما بين 30 إلى 50 ppg pound per gallon أو 20 إلى 50 20 إلى 30 20 to 30 20 to yeah, sorry sometimes I speak in Arabic sorry I forget myself sorry for this so sometimes the density in PPG is could be between 10, 20 to 30, gravity factor and the, uh, the uh, true vertical depth. I can calculate vertical stress. Can I calculate pore pressure? Yes, NEPSA will reserve for a pressure. This is the pore pressure. Density of the fluid. Fluid could be water, could be salty water, brine. He gave you the value of it, 8.76. With gradient for the pore pressure is between 0.447. This is pressure gradient. Yeah, and if you multiply uh, 8.76 multiplied by 0.433, it gives you that value. These are important things to be aware about. If you want to do fracturing, you need to know these things. 
remember, you need to know pore pressure, vertical stress, I need to know the horizontal stress. اللي هو عبارة عن a tectonic movement of the ropes in terms of they are stable or not stable, as well as the maximum horizontal stress in terms of the force divided by area facing the uh, fracture. This is difficult. This one, I have to admit, these are difficult to calculate. Sometimes you need a certain model or certain thing to look at. So this is the uh, pressures you need to look into. Vertical is easy. The maximum horizontal is the small horizontal with the tectonic. Small horizontal with the tectonic. So vertical more, then horizontal one a bit less, and then you have the small horizontal will be the smallest value. So if I do fracturing, I fracture from the least stress. Yeah, I mean the small edge, how the asgarin. So I have something like that, hydraulic fracture direction. Because of the fluid, I will open it that way. You see, this way. As if you open a book. So I open the, here, my, this is my well bore. I'm injecting my fracture fluid. The pressure could be 6,000 PSI, 7,000 PSI. The fluid go inside and it open the well bore like that. This is the top view. This is the top view. So this is the center of the well bore. This distance we call the width, width of the fracture. This is the length of the fracture. And this is the height of the fracture. HF. So WF, XF, and HF. If you multiply WF with XF, with HF, you get the volume of the fracture. Multiply by two because you have two wings, left and right. But the horizontal, and it's a mean vertical fracture because it is uh, perpendicular. The uh, axis mounted on the horizontal well. And you do it in intervals. Don't do it all the way through. I don't like it because it was a damage for the, the casing with cementing. So do it interval better for you. These are some examples of them. At the end of the day, you need to understand this stress analysis. Relationship between depth and the pressure. I'm worried about the time. So we have because we've been given 75 minutes. So depth and meter stresses on the X axis. And clearly you need something called natural, that is pore pressure. This is the pore pressure, it's sometimes called the reservoir pressure, PR. Horizontal stress has a chart mark. <laughs> and vertical stress is the maximum because of the Rocks so difficult sometimes to, <coughs> to fracture the rocks. Yeah, I need to fly like that. You can open it just like that, easy like a book, but stop and to fly no too much weight on it. And these are so you need to understand some of these stress analysis, pore pressure, vertical, horizontal, high missile the cultural subsidies. You can calculate the sigma H of the Lua. That's the most difficult one, as I mean, tectonic. So somebody gave us uh, uh, equations for that. Small sigma H, if I go to the diagram here, this one, here, this one. The pressure, which is, or stress, which is tried to prevent opening. the fracture. this way. This is the equation you can use to calculate. That is Dave, the uh, any reservoir pressure, or reservoir pressure at a certain location, N. A tectonic, difficult to predict. In my particular arm, you have to have some history about your rock, especially if you have fold, or you have any tectonic movement. At the end of the day, what is the pressure which will start opening the rocks. How I calculate? This is the equation given to you. The initiation breakdown pressure. So you need the horizontal, big horizontal, 
residual pressure with T naught yet tensile strength of the rock, which you can get it from a certain books. Limestone, sandstone, dolomite, could one have T naught factor hasabi. So these are, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm stopping here because I'm thinking about the time. And then alpha is a biot, biot uh, constant, an engineering constant. Most of the time, that is equal to one. I will move faster. I'm sorry about this because of the time. And uh, the other model, the model is a KGD models. <coughs> <laughs> this is used in open hole combination, macro perforation. So very hardly they use it. In model other, it's in the uh, PKN model, this most common one, and we use it to calculate <coughs> the width of the fracture, more width of the fracture, the average width, and also the volume of the fracture. So if I want to do calculation, I use this one. I use this model. PKN model. How much some more PKN? This better in the alim or Mohandas in Yulaya. There's an engineer. He put that. So PKN, uh, Perkins, Kern, Nordigren. Well, KGD, uh, this is the name of the engineers who had it. I can't even pronounce it. Okay. But Hank will PKN or KGD. KGD, I don't use it very much because it's open hole, macro open hole, highly. All perforated holes. So I use PKN. PKN, it will give me the idea about the width of the, the width of the fracture and the volume of the fracture. Which are any shear modules, G factor, according to Hooke's law, and it's a mean modulus. E modulus, and the is a mona E modulus, young modulus. The rocks is a mona shear modulus, capital G. Leo Ebara and young modulus divided by the volume of the fracture. I will pass faster now, and then I open the question and answer. I hope I have covered as much as I can. Very nice subject, but it more time, need more time to talk about. So you need to understand neck modulus, Hooke's law, with hydro fracturings, and elastic limit, plastic and fracturing, especially rocks of limestone and so on. This slide I got from my friend Ali Al Mutairi, he gave me that slide. Elmet acid again, acid fracturing is something else. So I hope by now I give you my experience about hydraulic fracture.